you and thank you for joining us again for YPWW. And we pray that God has been good to you all week long. Thank God he's brought us back again, gave us another opportunity to gather around his word. And let's begin with a word of prayer. God, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for your word. We thank you for this opportunity to gather around your word. God, reveal to us what you want us to learn. Give us a mind to apply this lesson to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen and thank God. Amen. So we're starting a new quarter. Amen. And we're on lesson number one. God makes humankind live by his spirit. Amen. And the aim of all the lessons for this quarter is to explore and gain insight into the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of every believer. Amen. And when we talk about the Holy Spirit, amen, there, this is one of the subjects, amen, one of the doctrines that have been disagreed upon uh, in the church world in the church arena, uh, especially when we talk about the works of the Holy Ghost, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and the gifts of the Holy Ghost, uh, what the Holy Ghost, his purpose is. But there's all kind of different views when it comes to the church world today. And how we view the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, it starts with the way that we understand who God is and how we experience his presence in our lives. Uh, and the spirit of God is sent to empower and lead and teach and guide God's people and to give new life to all those who respond in faith uh, to the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we need to know who the Holy Ghost is first and foremost before we go into this quarter. But the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is the third person in the Trinity. You know, God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy Ghost, which makes the Holy Spirit a person. So we must stop referring to the Holy Ghost as it. We'll start referring to the Holy Ghost as he or him because he's a person. He's the spirit of God who acts as God. And this quarter is necessary to every believer because we all need to know why we believe what we believe and why we believe in the Holy Ghost and why we believe in who he is and his purpose and his abilities and his characteristics. And this first lesson is basically introducing us to him as a life giver. And he's the source and sustainer of our physical lives and our spiritual lives. In our first section in our lesson tonight, it talks about who creates life and God creates all things. You know, he is the source of life. In our lesson text, it'll be coming from Job 33 and 4, 34, 10 through 15, and Psalm 104, 24 through 30. You can go back and read those. I may read a few tonight just for the lesson's sake, but uh, I'll read 33 and 4 Job. It says, the spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty have given me life. And when we talk about the Holy Spirit working in the Old Testament, uh, one description of him working is when we speak about the powerful breath of God. And in the scripture, the breath of God was just a force that destroyed or created. In Psalm 33 and 6, it says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. And we're familiar, you know, with how he breathed into the nostrils of man and breathed life into him in Genesis 2 and 7. So it's the spirit that breathe into us life. The spirit is the breath of God, which breathes life into humanity or humankind. And just like when God breathed into Adam, making him a living person, when we are saved, God breathes into us who were dead to sin, the power of the Holy Ghost. And as humankind, we can't take the credit for our lives physically or spiritually. And when we go to Titus 3, 4 and 6 in verse 5, 4 through 6, in verse 5 in that text, it gives us a phrase says the renewing of the Holy Ghost. And when you renew something, that means you completely change something for the better. You you are renovating it, you know. So when God saved us by his grace, the spirit of God comes into our lives and into our heart. He gives us a new heart. In Ezekiel 20, 36 and 26, it says, A new heart also 
will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a, a heart of flesh. And this new heart is what results in a new life. So the Holy Spirit was involved in creation of the world and humankind because the Holy Ghost brought about God's plan. He was the force that stood behind the physical information of all things, especially human beings. And Job declares the spirit of God had made me and the Holy Ghost was and is instrumental in the production of life. And in Romans 8 and 2, the Holy Ghost is called the spirit of life. So where there's life, there's hope. In Romans 15 and 13, it says, now the hope that the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. And you notice in that text, the word fill and abound, which, you know, these two words, uh, the word of God wants us to know that we can live abundant lives. And through God's spirit, he gives us an abundant life to live. The Bible tells us here that God is the giver of abundant life. And Jesus saved us to live. He saved us to live a life that is filled with his presence, with his power, with his glory. And if we want this abundant life that Jesus can give, it will require us to walk close to him. And Paul used three words to describe the life that God can give us and that he wants us to live as humankind. And these three words are joy, peace and hope. And these are things that everybody is looking for. But what these three things have in common is that they can't be bought and they can't be manifested in our own strength. They only can be found through Jesus Christ and through the power of the Holy Ghost. They can only be found in Jesus. He's the source. The Holy Spirit is the source of our joy, our peace and our hope. So how do we get this kind of life? Verse 13 tells us in two words, it's found in believing. We get to live his life by having faith in God and by the work of the Holy Spirit that's within us. And we can't do it ourselves, but we can stop it from being a reality in our lives if we really don't believe God and get to experience the power of the Holy Ghost in our lives for ourselves. The Holy Spirit has the power to fill us and give us the abundant life that we all want to have. And he energizes our life, which is the next section in our lesson. In Job 34, and I'll just read 14 and 15, it says, If he set his heart upon man, if he gather unto himself his spirit and his breath, all flesh shall perish together and man shall turn again unto the dust. So he gives life to all human beings. But just like he has the power to give life to all human beings, he has the life, power to take that life away. And he energizes our life. He's the source of why we do what we do, why we even have this opportunity to live. Uh, John 7, 38, 39 says, He that believeth on me as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the spirit, which they be, that believe on him should receive for the Holy Ghost was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Now in the scripture, there are several symbols that represent God's spirit as a life giver. You have the all, which is the sustaining of life, fire, protection or purification of life, the dove, which represents new life, water, which represents the source of life. And in this text, we are talking about the water, which he is the source of our life. And Jesus proclaims himself to be the place where living water is found. And Jesus isn't the living water, but he's the fountain where it can be found. Throughout the New Testament, water is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. It's the symbol of life. And if the spirit is the water of life, then Jesus is the fountain of that living water. And before the water of life could be poured out on every believer, on every saint, then the fountain had to be open. And this happened when Jesus died on the cross for our sin. Amen. When he died for us, then we were able to receive this living water. We were able to receive this life. And you notice that these river, rivers of living waters are flowing from the belly. And that's a place that's never really satisfied. You know, you can feed yourself and in a second, your stomach will be saying, I want a snack or I need something else to drink. 
But, you know, when Jesus is talking here, he's saying if we come to him, we, he'll give us satisfaction. You know, while we live this life, we have to live it through Jesus Christ. And there's a lot of people who are seeking out of a, a, a lot of stuff, you know, that never really can satisfy. You know, you can ask the addict, ask the drunkard, ask the gambler, ask the person that's addicted to sex. The pursuit of these things, they only leave a peace person empty and always wanting more. But Jesus promised us a life, you know, he promised us a life that will satisfy us. You know, it's the spirit of God in us that gives us joy, that gives us peace. In Romans 8 and 11, it says, but if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwelleth in you. So the spirit of God, it also changes how we think, how we live, how we look at things. You know, you know, there are some definite changes that are going to happen on the inside, but those changes will also make their way to the outside. And anybody, you know, that says that they are living by the spirit of God, filled with the Holy Ghost, that Jesus is their Lord and Savior, but you don't see no changes in the way that they live. Uh, it's probably because they aren't saved or they're in a backslidden condition. But the spirit of God causes humankind to have a desire to want to honor God about the life that we live. And he's able to sustain us. Uh, our next lesson text was Psalm 104, 24 through 30. And it lets us know how the spirit is at work to create, to renew and provide, you know, for humankind that he created. And the Holy Spirit gives us power, gives us joy, gives us hope in this world. And nobody, you know, you, you hear it all the time. I can't live that type of life. Uh, I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't do what y'all do. But it's not me. And it's, it won't be you either. You know, nobody in their own strength can live the life that is required by God. But John 14, 16 says, and I will pray the father and he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Galatians 5, 16 says, then I, this I say, then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And when the spirit of God lives in you, he makes it possible to live. He makes it possible to live a life that will bring glory to God. Uh, really, you know, when I was studying this lesson and when I first seen the subject, the first verse that came to my mind was Acts 17, 28, when it says, for in him we live and move and have our being as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. You know, it's in him that we live and have life. You know, it's in him we move. And when we move, we move with his purpose and his intent. And it's in him that we are about being, not just being who we are, but as we look back on our lives and see the life that we live so far and we look forward to the life that's ahead of us, we'll see that through everything that we've been through, he's caused us to live through it. You know, we have our being because he called us to be. You know, when he formed us in our mother's womb, even before we became, he knew who and whose we were going to be. You know, so his spirit and the spirit of God, you know, he'll give us the desire to live for him and to want to live for his purpose and his plan. Amen. And in the life that the, the spirit of God will have us live, it will give us a desire to always want to bring glory to the name of our Savior. Amen. So we thank God for you joining us tonight for this brief summary of the YPWW lesson. We pray that this uh, helps you. Amen. And I'm excited about this quarter. Amen. Because I feel like this is a subject that we do need to discuss. We need to know why we believe what we believe. We need to know who the Holy Ghost is. And I feel like when we come out this quarter, all of us will be empowered the more uh, by the refreshing. And I feel like there's no way we can study about the Holy Ghost without all of us being refreshed, refilled, re rejuvenated, and ready to be effective saints. So when we come out this quarter, we're going to have a better relationship with the Holy Ghost. We're going to acknowledge him after who he is, not as an it, but acknowledge him for who he is in our lives and be excited for the things that he's going to reveal to us. Amen. So we're going to leave you with question number two 
in our book. It says, name three ways in which the Holy Ghost affects humankind. Amen. Let's end with a word of prayer. God, we thank you for tonight and we are excited for this quarter. We thank God for what you're about to reveal to us. We thank you for the new strength, new purpose, God. We thank you for the refreshing that we're about to experience, God. And God, we just ask that you help us apply this lesson to our lives. We pray for every sinner, God. We pray that you save the sinner, reclaim the backslider, and refresh the saint, God. Oh, God, we thank you for your word. We ask that you give us a mind to apply it to our lives. And as we go forth, God, we ask that you order our steps, that you help us to make right decisions. Pray for everyone that comes across this video, God. God, that you meet that unspoken prayer request, that you meet that need, that you intervene where you need. God, You, we thank you for being a God that not only hears our prayers, but answer our prayers. We give you all glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Again, we are the Bethel Church of God in Christ, Plain Dean, Louisiana. Pastor Donald Douglas is our pastor. Thank God for our First Lady, First Lady Douglas, my wife, to all the saints at Bethel, to all of you saints of God. We thank God for you subscribing. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe to the page. Amen. And we just pray that the word of the Lord is encouraging you and helping you in your own study time. Amen. And in your personal study, as you go to YPWW, all young people, Thank God for you. Amen. The devil wants us to believe that young people aren't being saved, delivered, and set free, but we know the devil is a liar. And we thank you for being a willing young person and a willing young person that's willing to work. Amen. We thank you for joining us. And we love you. And we pray for you. Continue to pray for us. And we'll see you next week.